And as Joel has been singing, uh, we have been thinking about the fact as God is high and holy and lifted up and he holds on to us by his love. This fills us with uh, words and thoughts and feelings of gratitude and love and our desire to somehow or another express to him the feelings that we have and to say to him, God, you're just so, so wonderful and uh, we love you. What a wonderful privilege it is for him to have given to us, privilege for us to have been given by him a family to be part of and you are that family and I'm very privileged to be part of this family. We're also very, very privileged to have our sins washed away and to have a, a home that we are looking forward to when we die, to go to be with Lord in, in heaven. We have, we have things that he does on a daily basis in our lives as he teaches us from our life experiences, as he provides for our needs, as he grants us uh, the privilege of learning what things we're doing wrong and helps us to change and to do things better. You know, our love for him needs to and should increase if everything is going the way it ought to. It is a natural thing for us to, to have joy for those kinds of things. And so when it's an opportunity to do something for him that would honor him, uh, we all tend to want to flock to that. And we all want to be part of it because, you know, we've seen what God has done for us. The pictures that we showed uh, on the screen of what has God done through the Family Life Center, children's lives who have been saved, uh, who have come to know Jesus as their Savior. Uh, people from different nations coming here to learn English and their children also being cared for in the Family Life Center. And, you know, we have had funerals, we've had weddings, and we've had uh, so many other opportunities to, to speak of God to the community as we give out food at Thanksgiving and give out a meal at Christmas time. What a wonderful opportunity is for us to tell God how much we love him. So when we talk about then, as we are for the next couple of weeks, uh, about the stones of remembrance, these are things that remind us who it is that we serve and who he is that has saved us and who it is that we uh, can express our love to. It is to God. And he is wonderful. We talked about what he's done in the past. We talked about what he's doing now. We'll talk about what we have in terms of need in order to keep this financially uh, above water. And then we're going to give a challenge to our all of us, to all of us to uh, commit ourselves to giving towards the, uh, the ministry of this Family Life Center as well as to the church. So that's why I, I chose a passage today that is really an exciting passage. It is about the building of the temple, but it's really actually the preparation for the building of the temple and the giving of the people to that really wonderful work. And so if you would take your Bibles and turn in them to 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29. 1 Chronicles 29. What we have here is at the end of David's life, we have him uh, leading in a, uh, uh, a giving time, a time that is pretty much like what happened back in the time of Moses when Moses had all the people give towards the, the construction of the tabernacle. It says there that the people gave generously, gave from their hearts. God moved them in their hearts to give. And he even had to say, please stop, that you're doing too much. You need to slow down here. Uh, what a wonderful problem to have to deal with. Well, we have the same sort of response going on here as well as David is speaking to his own people about the building of the temple. You know that he wanted to build it himself. But even though the prophet Nathan said, sure, go ahead, God's with you, go ahead, do what you have you know, on your heart. God then spoke to Nathan that night and said, no, 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 no. Now you need to go back to David and tell him he's not the person who's going to do that. It will be his son who will build the temple. 
Now, it didn't stop David from providing for that building. He gathered together all kinds of things to use in the building of the temple. But I want you to just look at this day and, and come away with this feeling that, you know, this is a totally different thing from many people's concept of giving and, and what it should mean to us personally. For these people to give was a privilege and it was a joy. And it was a thing that caused them to worship God and come away feeling just, just so great that they could be part of it. And that is where we like our congregation to go, our, ourselves as leaders and the whole congregation as well. That we might all come away with a set, set understanding that what we've done is a good thing and that it was a joy to do it because it was for God. And we're looking forward to what God is going to continue to do through our church as a result. So we want this. How does this happen? Now, what is the right way to give? And that's, well, that's the title of the message that I'm going to share with you today. First of all, you read in verse 1, Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. His task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. What we have here, as David says these things, is the leaders are leading the congregation. The people are being led. David is leading by declaring the right focus. The right focus. Now, the building of the Family Life Center has never been, never will be, about us. It's always been about God and about what God wants to do through us and to us, for us and for our neighbors. It's all about God. It is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now you can imagine that when this structure was finished, that it might have been a temptation for people to say, hey, hey, come look. Look what we got. It's about us, man. We are some nation. No other nation has a temple like this. You remember that Jesus was walking with the disciples on one occasion, and they said, Jesus, you see that temple? What a glorious sight. And then he begins to tell them that pretty soon it's going to be dismantled. Wow, that was hard for them to take because it was a source of pride. And I don't know that it was a negative kind of thing, but it was really wonderful to be associated with the God who wanted to live among his people. And what a beautiful edifice this actually was. Now, I have to fight that, you know, when we have visitors coming to the church, and they, you know, they kind of come in, and, and especially if they've been here before, I mean, you know, from, from long ago. I'm, I'm always like, have you seen the FLC? Have you seen the gym? No? Oh, I'd love to show it to you. <laughs> I love to show them this building and what God has been doing through it. And I talked to them about how God provided for it and about what God is using it for in our church. I have to watch, though, that I don't get this feeling like, you know, aren't we something, huh? We got a gym? The only one in the borough? Ha <laughs> ha. No. <laughs> That's not what it's about. It's really all about God. We didn't have the money to start this building, but God has been providing for it all the way along. How wonderful is that? So then David says, With all my resources I've provided for the temple of God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. So what we see here is David is saying, through my leadership here in the government, I have been very careful to begin collecting from the raids that we've done, from the conquering of different enemies and the spoils that have come to us. I did not take them for myself and give them to my generals. I kept them for the building of this temple because I wanted so much for God to be glorified. And so he says, I've been collecting all these things and this is what I'm giving as a representative of all of Israel. 
Next thing is something really interesting. He says, besides my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything I've provided for this holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold. Yada, yada, you know, I don't go through the whole list, but you can see that it's quite extensive. Very, very generous so David is also giving leadership, not only in providing a focus and leading the government to make preservations of money and gold and silver for this, but he has also done it personally. He is leading the people. He's not simply saying, guys, I'm going to be setting up a tax and all of you people are going to be paying for this wonderful temple. Isn't that great? No, he's saying, I want to see this happen, and I am going to give toward this. And when we come to you as a congregation here, please understand that the elders are also going to be giving as well, because that is our heart as well, that God will be honored and continue to be honored through this facility. We will lead in ways in which you may not be aware of, but definitely we are not asking you to do something that we're not ourselves willing to do too. So as David has led and uh, encouraged them in this, we see that that gives a certain kind of response. In verse 6, the leaders of families, the officers and the tribes of Israel, and the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. It wasn't simply David and him and his government, but these people also who were under him were inspired by his giving, and they wanted to give too. They give out their own personal fortunes so that God's honor and glory might continue. How did this affect the people? Look down at verse 9. And the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord, and David the king also greatly rejoiced. Sounds a lot like a party to me. Sounds like a lot of rejoicing. Sounds like a, re, a, a, a happy worship service of coming together and just giving to the Lord, putting it before his feet. David led, his leaders followed and said, you know, we want to do this too. And the people followed them. It was a whole body kind of experience. Well, the leaders then are leading in another way, not only in giving themselves, but also helping people to understand what they are doing. So we see a psalm that's given here. David writes, David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Now, you can also understand that after the temple was built, people might be tempted to be saying, you know, this is our temple, this is our nation. I don't know that any other nation that has something as beautiful as this. But after an experience like they had where they all gathered together and worshipped God and gave willingly, joyfully, and happily, they might have been tempted to say, you know how much money we raised? You realize how much money we raised? We raised millions. Aren't we something? Well, David is not allowing that at all. He says, Lord, praise be to you, the God and Father of Israel, uh, from everlasting to everlasting. Why? Because, he says, everything belongs to you. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. He recognized and he wants the people to understand, too, that whatever money they have, whatever savings they have incurred over the years, whatever wealth may be come to them, as, even as a result of their hard work and wise investment, all of it belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. 
We tend to want to hold on to it. We tend to want to put our little stamp on it saying, this belongs to, and put our names there. But in that actuality, David is saying, no. Guys, we need to keep everything in perspective. This belongs to God. Now, we can give voice assent to this. You know, we can verbally say, yes, I agree that all that I have is, God, is God's. Until we come to the place where somebody says, okay, God wants it now. And then all of a sudden, we're wondering, you know, well, well, well what, what does he want? How much does he want? And, uh, and what's he going to use it for? Uh, that, that is not, that is not our problem. Our problem is, is what does God want us to do? It is his money. He goes on to say, wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. You see, he was the one who gives strength for you to rise financially and in, in importance in the community. It is he also that can bring you down. It is he who has given to us everything that we have. And we are his stewards. We are those who use what he has for his glory. Jesus made that so clear to us in the parable of the talents. When he spoke about giving to certain people that were his servants, that which they should invest for the kingdom. Some of them invested it. One of them did not put it in, a, in the ground. But all of them were quite clear about the fact that it belonged to him. And they came back and said, here is my money. No. It said, they said, here is your money and the interest that we earned. So, it's all the Lord's, all of it. And we are his stewards. And so, Lord, here it is. What do you want me to do with it, is the appropriate response. We give thanks to God for being able to give. He says in verse 13, Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. That's a lot different from saying, so how much do I have to give? So what are you asking for? Uh, do I have to tithe 10%? I mean, the church is always asking for money. I've heard that one so many times. David's attitude was that it all belongs to you, Lord, and you give us the ability to give. You give us the ability to give. That, what a privileged that is. I know, my God, that you uh, give us that ability. We give you thanks and we praise your glorious name. Thank you for giving us that ability. So then the, the leaders lead in another way in exemplifying humility. Not only do they give, us, give understanding concerning giving, but they also under, give understanding concerning humility. And so we read in verse 14, but who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given only what comes from your hand. How is it that we should be given the ability to give? Now, you may be thinking about this. Now, wait a minute. I made those investments. I worked all those years. And... That's my work and my effort and that's my money. But who gave you those abilities? Who caused your finances to increase when you invested it? Many of you could probably share with us stories about putting money in a very safe place and having lost thousands of dollars. So you may have done a wise thing but it did not bring any return. So if it does bring a return, is it your doing or is it God's doing? It's God's doing. He grants the increase. Why? For his purposes. Not so that we might enrich ourselves, but that his kingdom might be furthered. Where are we to be looking for the rewards of this life. In this life, 
Well, he speaks a lot about in this life you will have suffering. And in this life you will be giving sacrificially. In the next life when you come before him, he says the rewards will come richly. Anyone who's given a house or home, he says, will receive much more in the kingdom of heaven. And so what we give then is that which he has given to us. And who are we that he should have given it to us? I'm not particularly smart. And I'm certainly not smart in the areas of finance. But God has enriched me as a person. And I am in this same place and saying, Lord, there are a lot of other people that would have done much better than I would have done. And yet you have blessed me? Why me? Lord, so thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Now I desire that you be glorified with it. I'm not even so much as a person who's like a regular citizen. That's what he says here. He says in verse 15, we are aliens and strangers in your sight. And as were all our forefathers before us, we were wanderers in this land. We are not people of great prestige. We're just simply here and gone. We're passing through. We're phantoms. And, you know, we're only here temporarily. And then off we go. We're really not all that great. Why would you want to entrust us with this? Our days are like a shadow without hope, apart from God. Oh, Lord, our God, for all this abundance that we have provided for your building, uh, you a temple in your holy name, it comes from your hand and it all belongs to you. And you have privileged us with the opportunity to use it for your glory. And then... The leaders lead again in exemplifying sincerity. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity so that when I give, I give out of a willing heart, a heart that loves you, that is grateful for what you have done for me. All these things says David, have I given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly <clears throat> your people who are here have given to you too. Lord, you test our hearts and you know that we're giving sincerely and out of love and gratitude. You see, that's what makes the difference. If you give because you feel browbeaten or because you have to or somehow or another God's forcing you into this, he's not really wanting your money. It's all about your expression of love and sincerity. And they lead in exemplifying also dependency. And this is something I think you'll find very interesting. Oh, Lord, God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, we are in danger of losing this desire. We did well when we first started the building of this building. It is much harder to raise money for a building that already exists. People lose vision, lose sight. They see it as a burden sometimes. And that's what should never happen. It should always be what David has been describing. And he's asking in prayer, and this would be something that all of us should pray for one another, that we should somehow lose the vision for the work God wants to do through our church. And so he says, keep this desire in the hearts of your people forever and keep our hearts loyal to you. It's not about the money. It's about our attitude of gratitude to you. Keep our king in the right frame of mind, too. As he prays, oh, give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commandments, requirements, and decrees, to do everything to build its palatial structure for which I've provided. And then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God. Come on. Praise the Lord your God. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to, like he would be talking to them. So, they said, well, I don't know. 
I'm not comfortable doing that out loud. No, it wasn't that way at all, was it? So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed low and fell prostrate before the Lord, their king. Hallelujah. That is what we're looking for, for all of us. That this effort to continue this ministry will be something that is coming from the heart with sincerity, with full understanding that what God has given us belongs to him. And yet he gives us this wonderful privilege of being part of this ministry by giving sacrificially toward it. We want this. This is where we're going. And God bless us if he keeps us with this kind of heart so that we will never fall behind and lose the blessing that could be ours as a result. Next week, I will talk to you about the possibilities of loss that are rampant all around us as we take upon this project together. There will be many things that will cause us to lose a lot of God's blessing. We don't want to let that happen, and we're not going to. We'll follow the Lord step by step as we go. Shall we pray? Father, once again, we come to you and then we acknowledge there is a great need, a big hill to climb. And yet, Father, we thank you that we are on our way. We're a long ways on our way. And we're grateful for how you have provided for us. And now, Father, we pray that you would work in our hearts so that when the time comes and it's our opportunity to give, that we will not give out of obligation, but we will give out of our love and gratitude to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for what you have done for us. And may you be pleased with us as we express our love to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Uh,